And tonight we are, as far as I know, well, I just commit to you, it doesn't matter how long it takes. I mean, if we're here sitting here at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock, we're going to finish chapter four of Philippians tonight. I might be by myself on this call, <laughs> but uh, we're, going to, we're going to complete it tonight. And, uh, most likely get into the next book, which, as you know, is Colossians. So uh, tonight we're officially going to pick up in verse 19, but unofficially we're going to backtrack a little, not redo everything, but just for uh, the sake of, of getting us in the right uh, thought process. We're going to back it up. And just read basically through. Uh, Are you awake? Are you awake? Let's start with verse 11, if you will, and we'll just move from there. So, we talked about this last week. You know, this is really uh, important. I don't want to. This is such an important passage of scripture here in Philippians chapter 4, and it really relates to what we've we're dealing with as a church and as individuals too you know it's just that's amazing how god works that all out and so verse 11 not that i speak in regard to need i want you to make note of that phrase regard to need so the word need is important it says i'm not talking about what i need because he'd been thanking them and commending them for sending uh assistance to him in time of need you know they in fact you know they were he said the only ones that were really committed to that at that time. And so he really appreciated that. And he says, and then there was a time they weren't, and now they that sent again. And he says, I don't want to just emphasize my own personal need. And then, like we talked last week, for I for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. We discussed all that, whether things are going well or not well, you have an abundance or you have a need or a lack of some to be content in this sense of trusting in god being relaxed being calm being at peace knowing that god is with you and and being totally persuaded and knowing in reality that god will eventually meet that need that god is meeting that need and if it's not something that you that comes to pass in that exact moment that in due time, God will take care of your need. I, I think you all believe that, right? That God is with us. He's with us when we're experiencing our needs, our crises, and he will bring us through all those. And sometimes, sometimes the answer we're looking for is not instantaneous. Sometimes it is. We don't want to discount that. I mean, God is able to just in a moment of time, just to meet our need right then and there. But then, as you know, he chooses at time for whatever reason. Sometimes it's because our faith should be tested. Sometimes it's because things are not in place for everything to work out to supply our need. Well, you know, God knows all that. So, but we, he says, I have learned to be content or at peace, not stressed out, not full of anxiety and all that. I know how to be abased. I know how to be low, be in a low situation as far as being a need and not having an abundance. Being down low is abased. And I know how to abound or having overflow and fullness of, of all I, I would desire. I've, I've learned to deal with all those situations, to go through those things. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. What does he mean by that? So I've experienced all that. And through that, I have learned. What has he learned? I have learned not only the, what that means, but I have learned to trust God through all of that. To be calm and relaxed and not stressed out, knowing that God is with me and that he will take care of that need. And I, I just want to emphasize tonight, we do have to be, you know, really, we do have to be convinced that God is going to meet our need, that help is on the way. And it may not be 
today, but, and it may be, but we just have to be totally convinced God is with me. He knows my need. He's with me. He cares about me. He'll bring me through this time. He'll help me with his grace to get through what I'm dealing with. And he will at some point meet my need. If it's healing, you know, Sandy's dealing with that at some point, God's going to heal her. And if it's financial crisis, you know, if it's whatever it is, God will eventually take care of those issues. Meanwhile, it's not like he doesn't know or doesn't care. He's with us and he gives us the strength. He gives us the ability to go through that at the moment. And then at the proper time, he takes care of the need itself. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, verse 13. I can do it all. I can deal with every circumstance and every situation, both to be full and to have need, to be abased and to abound, no matter what it is. And the song I referenced on Sunday, who can remember Sunday? It's been so long ago. But if you remember at one point in my sermon, I did a reference the old song, Through It All. Remember that one, of course. So through every expense, I'm not going to break out in song, don't worry. Get enough of that on Sunday. But, uh, and sometimes on Wednesday too, I know. I don't have to have any music to break out. I just break out wherever, you know. So, um, <laughs> but that is a, a classic song. You know, th no, you know, through everything, you know, we've learned to trust in Jesus. We've learned to trust in God. We've learned to depend on his word. We've learned that he's with us, as I stated, and that he'll bring us through the experience with the strength we need. And at some point in his timing, he will meet the need itself. He will take it out of the way. He will not be with us forever. We have to be totally convinced of that, right? In order to have that peace I'm talking about. You know, the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, is with us. But we have to be convinced God is with me. And he will, at some point, take this out of my way. It will be, the need will be met. Verse 14, nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. He said, I've learned to deal with all this, but thank you anyway. In other words, I could have gone on longer as long as necessary in my state of need, but thank you anyway. I appreciate that you have blessed me. So also in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only were even at Thessalonica. You sent once and again and, and, and again for my necessities. Verse 17, not that I seek the gift. I'm not just after the gift you give, I appreciate it, as he said. But even more than that, beyond that, I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. I am so thankful because I know that God will bless you for what you're doing. Again, I'll just state it again. I did last week. We don't want to make the mistake of denying people the opportunity to be a blessing to us. And that's it's hard for us sometimes to accept things from other people. But when we refuse to accept their blessing, then we're denying them the blessing that will come from God to them because that's fruit in their account and God blesses them for their generosity and we don't want to be guilty of denying them that ability to be a blessing to someone. Verse 18, indeed I have I have all and abound. So I have all that I require and I'm abounding not just in general because God's with me, but now that you have sent to me what you did, I have more than enough, right? Now, that's a great attitude in itself because most people in this world, if you would take a poll, no matter how well off they are, would say they don't have more than enough. Oh, I need this, this, this. And everyone has, even the richest people, billionaires, would tell you they have things they need, right? I need this, that, and the other. But what a what a great mindset. I have all and abound. I have plenty. I have more than enough to satisfy me and to take care of my needs. 
I am full. Having received from Epaphroditus, let's say that about five times in a row, Epaphroditus, right? Well, you know, there are people who have difficult names to pronounce in our time too, right? There are people who have some unusual names, especially last names. Some people's last names we'd really struggle with, right? And some people's first names too. But anyway, Epaphroditus, the thing sent from you, a sweet smell and aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, and something that God himself received. And so we're back to this was fruit to your account, and I'm so happy that God is going to bless you because he says, after all, as far as God's concerned, it was a sacrifice to God that he that he received and found it to be very pleasant and acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. So I kind of rushed through all that because we already covered that before. But now we're coming to verse 19. Before we get into verse 19, as I catch my breath, I'm not out of breath. But anyway, I could go on and on. But uh, I do go on and on. <laughs> but I wonder if someone has a question or a comment at this point in our discussion. <laughs> All right, so as I stated last week, I'll restate this week. Verse 19, we often quote, and not incorrectly, I mean, it's very proper. I do it all the time, too. Verse 19 is a standalone verse, you know, self-contained of itself. But, and there's nothing wrong with that. But to get the full understanding of it and implications of it, you really have to do the previous verses, which we have done the last two weeks, uh, to really fully appreciate all that he's trying to convey in the verse, where he says, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So I referenced verse 11. I thought you make note of, the word need in verse 11. Not that I speak in regard to need. Everybody back to verse 11? Not that I speak in regard to need. And then if you tie that to verse 19, and my God shall supply all your need. My need has been taken care of. My God shall supply all your need. So the intervening verses is where he shares with them, thank you for sending help to me. And this is fruit to your account. This is a sacrifice on your behalf that you have given, that God has received. Not only, not only did I receive it, but we can extrapolate from that in our own lives. Uh, so when we give to someone else as a blessing, not only do they receive it, but God receives it as a sacrifice from us. And something that that's fruit to our account. So he says, based on so what we have to understand is based on what you have done, which is you have sacrificially given to bless me, because you have been a blessing. I am going to bless you because you have met my need. My God shall supply all your need. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? He's going, to, he's going to bless all unity because that's that's God's economy. That's what God, that's the role model, Jesus Christ. And, and so that's the way it works. As believers, if we're to be like God is, be his children. You know, if God is anything, he is a giver. For God so loved the world, we tie that together. You know, we can define God in one word if we want to boil it down. God is love, John says in 1 John chapter 4. And that's true if you want to summarize God in one word. You can't contain God in one word. But, I mean, that really describes God. God is love. And a result of his love is that he gives. Out of his love, he gives. 
So John 3.16, John again. <coughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So if God is a giver, then his children, that would be us, we must also be givers. And if we give, like he has given, if we give sacrificially, then he will he will meet our needs. So it's been said incorrectly, you can't argue with God. It's not a losing and I wish people would understand this. And you on the call here, I, I, I you, know, you, you do understand this, I, I believe. But just to reemphasize, I, I wish people would understand that giving to God, and that would take different forms, offerings, tithes, uh, giving to other people in time of need, even though it's a sacrifice, all those things are giving to God. That's not a losing proposition. It is not. We don't come out the loser on that. We gain on that. Because it has been said, you can't outgive God. So here's what happens. When you give, even though it, here's what happens. I, I, and you just have to accept it by faith. And, and the people struggle with this. But so you give, you give to other people. You give to God directly through tithing and giving your offerings to the church, God's work and so forth. So people do that. Well, that makes, they, they calculate that. And I think, well, that means I'll have less money to work with in my budget because I've given, you know, ties is, I mean, nothing to discount. 10% is, is substantial. And then as, as you know, as believers, you know, kind of a understanding that that's not all of it, that we give 10% and then we also give additional offerings as well. And then to top it off, we give to others in need, right? We give other to other causes. So there's a lot of giving going on as a Christian. That's, you know, I don't diminish that or downplay that. That's true. Absolutely true. And so people look at that in the natural context and they think, well, that's obviously going to mean less for me and my family. So how can I do that? That's you know that's a that's a loss for me. When they don't realize spiritually, that's not a loss because when you give, God blesses you. So that whatever you need, and we'll get to this, God brings into your life. He, what you have to work with goes farther, and then it also opens the door so that blessings come into your life that would not otherwise come into your life. In other words, people giving to you and opportunities opening up, like jobs and things like that that would not have been available to you and other opportunities. God has a way of working things in our life so that in the end, it's not a losing proposition for us to give generously. God blesses us. You want to talk about financially? You want to talk about spiritually? I mean, some things cannot be calculated. Just financially, I, I hope that you all believe that if we uh, give to the kingdom of God, he will take care of us. He will provide for us, make sure that we have more than enough that what we have is more than sufficient. And so if you just look at it financially, I'm not saying everybody's going to get rich. I'm not saying that at all. But I do I do believe this and have practiced it and have experienced it in my own life. When you give to God's kingdom work, he will make sure you have enough in a variety of different ways, just, just directly financially. But that's not the end of the calculation, not just financially, but over and above that, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, relationally, in all kind of ways, God blesses us. His blessings upon our life in ways we can't calculate. So we're not the losers. In fact, we gain so much more when we are generous and give 
to the kingdom of God. And so he commends them in verse 19, my God shall supply. And notice he uses the word all, which is in, includes everything, all your need. You know, in verse 11, when he was talking about himself, he says, not that I speak in regard to need, he was talking about his need he had at that particular moment in time, and they met that need. They didn't take care of all of his needs forever and ever. He, they, he had a particular moment in time of need, and they took care of that. It wouldn't last forever, but it would. It did take care of that that particular need at that moment. And he says, "I'm so thankful for that, and most especially because it is considered to be fruit in your account, and God will bless you." But notice here. Because you have blessed me in this particular need, my God shall supply all your need. And he's, the idea is that if you continue to be generous in the kingdom of God, you continue to be givers as you are now, God will supply all your need. All of your need. You can't, as again, you can't outgive God. And you're not going to be a loser by giving generously. Not only, of course, we can not only our money, but also our time, our energy, our talent, all those things go into the calculation. God will supply all your need, everything you require. So what is that? Financial, physical, you know, healing, deliverance, supply, protection, wisdom, direction, whatever. Whatever we need, God will supply our need. And it may not manifest at a particular moment, but in due time, as I've been sharing with you, God will meet your need, all your need, in all areas of your life. And it's based upon his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now, if you're talking about in glory, you're talking about heavenly riches and the glory of God. And the glorious realm in which God dwells. How many know that God is limitless? There's, there's no end to his supply. He, there's nothing that God cannot do, and there's nothing he does not possess. So he doesn't have a limited supply. He has a limitless supply in that heavenly realm, in that glorious realm in which he, in which he exists. Because our God is, is almighty, all knowing all present and has all things. Our God has created all things. There's no limit to his supply. And it's based upon Christ Jesus, his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. When he went to the cross for us, died for us, rose again on the third day, what did he do? He made it possible for us to experience all the riches in glory. So we unlocked all of God's riches for us because we became heirs of God, joined heirs with Jesus Christ. We're, part, we're members of the family now. I've got good news for all of you. You're heirs. There's an inheritance that you're already tapping into that is limitless. I hope that makes you feel better, right? Maybe you thought that you were a certain level, you know, financially and spirit, whatever. But you're not. You are an heir. You are a member of God's family. And his riches are limitless. That doesn't mean you're going to have all of his riches, financial riches, today necessarily. But <laughs> you'll have all you need and more. And in the future, there's no limit to the blessings of God. And God is going to supply all of our need based upon his riches in glory through Christ Jesus and what he has purchased through his death and resurrection for us. What has he put? We can't begin to comprehend the fullness of his grace toward us that Jesus Christ made possible. You know, we talk about grace, and I'm going to turn it over to you here in just a moment. And I've shared this with you before. We talk about grace, and it's it's a word that's defined as unmerited favor, favor and blessing that we do not merit or deserve, have not earned. But then I always quickly add to that, 
but somebody earned it. It wasn't us, but somebody did. And that was somebody is Jesus Christ. He does merit it. He did earn it. He did pay the price for it. We didn't, but he did. And that's, and so extended to us is something we have not earned or deserve or merit. God's blessings and favor upon our life, but someone did earn it. That's Jesus Christ. So based upon what he did, God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Okay, so I'm going to be quiet and open it up to you. Anybody have a, a question you want to offer or a comment at this time? Please. <laughs> Somebody help me. I need help. Hmm. All right. Anybody appreciate God's grace to us? Anybody appreciate his blessing? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We can count on that. Say again. Um, I, I've been taking notes, and one of my notes says our inheritance is limitless. Mm -hmm. Well, I think everybody, everybody here in this Bible study has given money that they didn't think they could afford. Yeah. And gotten back more than they could have imagined. I mean, I know, I know, you're right. You don't outgive God. He opens doors. Yeah. And anyway, oh, Wilma told me, Wilma's told me a lot of stories about giving and receiving. Maybe yeah. she doesn't want to talk about them now, but I know she has. <laughs> She shared one earlier about getting the uh, the gas taken care of. That was that was good. That's right. That's right. And and she didn't put it this way, but she and Carl were determined to take that man's blessing away from him. They tried their hardest to <laughs> deny him that blessing, but he wouldn't have any any part of it. <laughs> I know through uh, my ministry with, with Lorraine, all those years that we missed together, and, and now, of course, I'm still ministering. At least at least I'm pretending to. And it, no, I'm not pretending. I really am still ministering uh, to you. I know that God has done some miraculous things. There were, there were so many, there were times when there just wasn't enough, you know, to meet the need, but God met the need and i told you this story before you know you all know but i'll just say it again you know lorraine was a great believer in god's miracles she'd always believe that she would always believe that people would send money or whatever she was always looking for checks in the mail you know i just kind of laugh at her and she'd go check the mailbox all the time you know i'm expecting god to you know you know what there were times that there there was a check unexpectedly would would show up in the mail somebody sent I'm like, well, thank God, you know, you of little faith, that's me. And she would disbelieve it, you know. I try to be more practical, too practical about it. And uh, I'm a person of faith, but she really, really believed that God was going to send money. Sometimes it was in the mailbox. Sometimes people would just, you know, unexpectedly give us, give us money. I told you the story one time at General Assembly. We were able to go to General Assembly and it was a special offering and we gave, I think it was $250 they were asking for that was more than we normally would give in one offering at General Assembly. We went ahead and gave it. And before the General Assembly was over, somebody came up to us and gave us that amount of money. So it's just amazing things like that that happen. And it doesn't always happen instantaneously like that, but I mean, every time you give, you don't necessarily get that back and more in the very same day or the same week. But over the course of time, God takes care of you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And 
and, and I understand why people would would struggle with the with the figures. You know, they say, well, my budget calls for this, and you know, it comes to tithing and giving, and and I just, you know, my response to that, I, you know, the way you have to look at it is, you know, there's never a convenient time to start doing that. There's never a time when people have excess money to where, well, you know, I just got more money. I know what to do with. I'm just going to start giving to God. No, it doesn't work that way. You have to make a decision. I'm going to start giving to God and trusting him. And I, and I would say, you know, that God always brings us through. So that what we have is more than enough. And sometimes people think about that. Well, you know, I don't have enough, but then think about this. And I know all you all agree with this. People who, who think that way, they're not real. They're not thinking in terms of God bringing miracles. Their lives. They're also not thinking in terms of, well, financially, I depend on that job I have. Well, what are you going to do if that job goes away? I'm not saying God will take your job away. I'm saying, but sometimes things happen and people lose their job. Well, if God's on your side and wants to bless you because you've been a blessing and you're a giver, then he can work that out so you can get another job. He blesses that way. Whereas if if you don't give generously to God, then he's not as inclined. He still blesses people, but he's not as inclined to work miracles as he would be if we are generous in our giving to him. You know, if we trust him in all ways in our lives, I'm just making the point. If we'll be all in and give of our, our finances, our heart, our time, our talent to God, all that's within us. He will take care of us and work things out no matter what happens in our life. And that should be a lot more comforting than any single job or whatever that we might have. Because God takes care of everything in a much greater way than anything else can possibly do for us. And so I don't get mad at people who don't see it that way. I just realize they don't understand that truth, that you can depend on God and he will absolutely bless you and meet the need and then i add and you know it's also true i mean initially there's a sacrifice involved and it may be a bit of a struggle for people at first if they're not used to giving to god it can be you know you did people have to trust that god will bring them through um that process all right anybody else questions or comments before we run out of time. Okay. So moving on then. And he's he's wrapping it up. Now to, to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. So, you know, praise be unto God. And he's closing it out. But, you know, this should be a sentiment of our heart as well, right? We, we offer praise to God and he is our father. We need to understand that relationship. He deals with us as a father because he is our heavenly father. And this should be our desire that we would give him glory and honor forever and ever. And then he's, and then he goes on and says, greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren are with me, greet you. All the saints greet you, but especially those who are of Caesar's household as he's writing from Rome. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So that concludes the book of Philippians. Yay! All right. All right. And so we won't jump into the next. It doesn't make sense to jump into the next book tonight. So I'm going to ask if you have uh, anything you want to add, either on topic or off topic. as you know, in this in this study, in our studies, you don't have to always stay on topic. If something comes to mind you really want to discuss, we can discuss other things. You may know that. Maybe you don't know. Chris may not know that. I don't know if Annie knows that either, that, that that's, that's a possibility. You can always raise other questions. And I'll either say, uh, I don't know, or we can perhaps give some, you know, some some thoughts on whatever subject that you might uh, be interested in. Anybody know when Jesus is coming? Soon. Hey, that's a good answer. That's what I was thinking. Soon. Tomorrow. Soon. Yeah, it reminds me of 
song that we sang years ago. He's coming soon. I remember that one. He's coming. Mm-hmm. That's right. It's coming soon. All right. Thanks, everybody. Hey, I, I really appreciate you joining us tonight and every every week. And I don't want you to not understand that. I really appreciate and everybody on this call appreciates you taking the time to participate with us. It it, it means so much that you that you care enough about God's word and about each other to be together and uh, and share. So that's just great. Uh, we're always hopeful that others will join us. So far, that hasn't happened. But hey, there's always hope. And I know some of you are, are working on that. And uh, well, maybe if we offered money, people people would get No, we won't do that. <laughs> 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 to bribe people, right? So, yeah, checks uh, in the mail. Yeah, the checks in the mail. <laughs> some of that funny money, right? So that we funny money, oh, oh. Monopoly money or something. Anybody still play? But I, I haven't played Monopoly since I was a kid. But uh, I understand people still play uh, at times. But maybe none of you. Yeah. It's just a long game, right? <laughs> I play with my great grandchildren. Oh, do you? Okay. <laughs> You'll play. You buy up all the houses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My family likes to play skip bow. Uh, doesn't require a lot of thinking, and uh, it can be it can be entertaining. <laughs> Which I don't play by myself at home. No, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I do at home in the way of games is that it's not by myself. I don't play against myself, but I do play with uh, mostly one of my sons and sometimes my other son, but he has it for a while. But And then one of my grandsons, we play online chess. And so you make a move and then you can set parameters how long the other person has to move. Usually all we do is seven days, so you get the – you get the message that they made a move and then you can look at it and you have up to seven days to make your move. Sometimes we'll make several moves in one day. And, uh, and so that's what I do game wise. I, I, I like it since I take my phone with me all the time. If I go to a restaurant, which I do most of the time for lunch, I'll stop. And of course, when there's nothing, you know, there nothing to do, I'll sit there and, and play and make two or three moves with my son or my grandson or three or four or whatever, while the food's coming. If I'm by myself, I don't do that. Other people are with me, but I do that if I'm by myself, which is most of the time. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. So I'm sure I'm just sure you were very interested in that little tidbit. I'm I'm mm-hmm. sure that just it's waiting for that coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, we appreciate that. Yeah. Didn't really need to hear any of that. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Anybody have anything to say before we wrap it up? We're wrapping it up. You know what? I should probably turn off the. Re- I should probably turn off the recorder. You may be waiting for that, so you can say something really, <laughs> really special. 